That was a powerful message in song. Good morning, everyone. Gising na ba kayo? Medyo. <laughs> Anyways, so before we start, let us bow our heads for prayer. Father God in heaven, indeed it's a privilege to worship you in the morning and most especially to hear your words. Lord, we invite continually the Holy Spirit to speak in our hearts today, to tell us what is your message that you want us to leave in our hearts. And thank you, dear Father, for the assurance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Do you ever know what is my topic this morning? Have you seen the, the program? Yes. Sabi doon, uh, stop witnessing, start loving. <laughs> When you would first hear the when you would hear the first uh, phrase, stop witnessing, then maybe we should we should not do what we did yesterday, <laughs> right? Who among you is here yesterday who joined the outreach? Can I see your hands? Okay, did you enjoy it? Do you want to do it again? You want? What if? there will be no AUP for Jesus friends who would join you. Would you still do it? Would you still do it? Even though you're alone? We'll see. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, if we're together, if we have friends to do it, then that's easier, right? And, and so the next challenge for us is what if there would be no weekend camp like this anymore? Would we still do it? And so therefore, we must uh, redirect our motivation. Rather than always saying to ourselves, we must share about Jesus, we must start witnessing, you must, we must now go to the next phrase, which is start loving. Why is it that sometimes it's hard to witness? Though we have heard a lot of times the commission, what is the great commission given to us? Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And not only that, in Acts 1 verse 8, it says, she shall, Ye shall be witnesses in all Judea and Samaria, in even unto the ends of the earth, right? But then, most of the time, we would be too lazy doing it. We would have a lot of excuses doing it because we are not founded with the right foundation. And so we therefore go to the right foundation on how to be a contagious Christian. Do you know what contagious means? Meaning just like the diseases. You can't help it. Do you ever want to be just like that, a contagious Christian, that you just can't stop doing it because you're like that? Well, it started with the word passion. What is the definition of passion? Do you ever know what passion is? Sometimes we relate, is, we relate it to the, you know, the passion of Christ. You know the movie, right? The passion of Christ. And... Uh, in biblical terms, passion would mean uh, to suffer because it's coming from the Greek word pasco, to suffer. And it's, uh, it's the last week of Jesus Christ on earth. That's what we call the passion week. So when we heard the word passion in biblical terms, it's mean to suffer. But then if you will go back to the dictionary, passion would mean fervor, enthusiasm, zeal, and intense emotion, compelling action. So we'll try to combine this meaning. So the, the combination would be passion is something we're so intensely committed to that we'd be willing to suffer or die for it. So that is the hardcore meaning of passion. And that is where being a contagious Christian could start or must start with, having a passion. A passion. But then, what kind of passion? What kind of passion? 
Would it be a, a passion for outreach? Would it be a passion for being holy or being righteous? What would be that passion that must be put in in your life that could make you a contagious Christian? That could make it easy for you or natural for you to be witnesses for God? Let us learn from uh, Paul. One of the most passionate person in the Bible is Paul. Let us open our Bible in Philippians chapter 3, verse 7 to 14. Philippians chapter 3, verse 7 to 14. Let me read. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yet doubtless, and I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Verse 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. But let me read it, for, uh, read it, to, read it to you in Tagalog. I want the... Sorry for those who do not understand Tagalog, but let me read the Tagalog version. In verse 7, Gayon man, ang mga bagay na sa akin ay pakinabang, ay inari kong kalugihan, alang-alang kay Kristo. Oo nga, at lahat ng mga bagay ay inaari kong kalugihan dahil sa dakilang kagalingan ng pagkakilala kay Kristo Jesus na Panginoon ko. Na alang-alang sa kanya'y tiniis ko ang kalugihan ng lahat ng mga bagay at inari kong suka lamang upang tumuhin ko si Kristo. At ako'y masumpungan sa kanya na walang katuwirang aking sarili sa makatuwid bagay sa kautusan, kundi ang katuwirang sa pamagitan ng pananampalataya kay Kristo. Ang katuwiran ngang buhat sa Diyos sa pamagitan ng pananampalataya upang makilala ko siya at ang kapangyarihan ng kanyang pagkabuhay na mag-uli at ang pakikisama ng kanyang mga kahirapan na ako'y natutulad sa kanyang pagkamatay. Kung aking tamuhin sa anumang paraan ang pagkabuhay na mag-uli sa mga patay. Hindi sa ako'y nagtamo na o ako'y nalubos na, kundi nagpapatuloy ako baka sakaling maabot ko yaong ikinaaabot naman sa akin ni Kristo Jesus. Mga kapatid, hindi ko pa inaaring inabot. Datapu at isang bagay ang ginagawa ko. Nanilimot ang mga bagay na nasa likuran at tinutungo ang mga bagay na hinaharap. Nagtutumulin ako sa hangganan sa ganting pala ng dakilang pagtawag ng Diyos na kay Kristo Jesus. One thing, one thing that is passion of Paul is to know Christ. Ang makilala siya ang makilala ang Panginoon. One of the root, how we could be a contagious Christian is the passion to know Christ. Yung magkaroon ka ng isang malalim na pagnanais na makilala si Kristo sa buhay mo. And when I finally experienced that, that's the time na hindi ko mapigilan but to share about Him. Tama? When you finally experience who Jesus is in your life, then that's the time you can't stop but share about Him. 
that's the time you have a story to tell. Sometimes it's hard for us to give a uh, testimony of our conversion because we thought we must uh, say it in a sen- systematic way. But then I want you to know it's just like a sharing a story about your friend. Sharing a testimony about your conversion is just like s- telling a story about Jesus, who is your friend, whom you have met in your life. And so when we encounter that event in our life that we finally met him, then we must not stop knowing him. If we are here last Friday night, sabi na, uh, Pastor Vergara told us, uh, when we will study about God, then we will have a lifetime, right? To know about God. And you know what? Um, today, uh, I'm married. And uh, once you have a person that you love so much, I never thought uh, you could have that uh, experience that you would never get boring with that person. Even when you get old with that person, you would keep on knowing him. And you would enjoy knowing him. And that's the gift of knowing God at the same time. Even when we will go to heaven, you know what? You would keep on knowing him. That's one thing that we would never lose. That's the 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 thing which is knowing more about God. It's endless. It's an endless story that we could have. And we could start it right now to know God more in our life. And when we start being passionate with it, and when we start putting all efforts, doing whatever it takes to know God more in our lives, you know the natural outcome of it? It will be outreach, service, and love to other people. When I finally uh, fell in love with my husband right now, what he loves, I also love, right? When you love that someone, what he loves or what she loves, you also turn to love it, right? Before, I don't like eating spicy foods. But then he wants it. (laughs) And so in the same way, I also like the same. So therefore, what God loves, what God loves, if we love him, then we also love. We always hear the word or the verse John 3.16. Can we recite John 3.16? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. There's one thing that God loves, for God so loved the world. And out of that love, he gave someone, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross. And for us, if we really love God, then we would also learn to love what he loves, which is the world. Not to a point of being one with the world, right? But loving the world in order to save some, as Paul had said. Loving every person you encounter. Have you remembered the quotation Ellen G. White says, how much do you value a soul? How do we value each soul we encounter in this life? I don't know if you would go back again to the dormitories just like we did yesterday. But have you ever felt the love? Have you ever felt the love for them? That, hey, it's Saturday. You must do something and keep the Sabbath holy, but then they're just there. I've, I've even witnessed someone playing their laptop, computer game on a Saturday afternoon. And I even saw someone, she is an Adventist, watching Harry Potter on a Saturday afternoon. You ever felt the love for these souls? Before I end, let me share a story. 
um, the story happened with a speaker who is speaking in a convention. And then one uh, grandfather, or Lolo, came to him, uh, interrupt his speaking, although he didn't want to interrupt. He said, I need to go. Because someone uh, uh, informed me that my granddaughter is lost for 24 hours already. And so this grandfather is very worried. And uh, although he didn't, he didn't want to go out of the convention, and he asked permission to go. But then this speaker uh, asked if he could pray for that person and for that lost granddaughter. And the whole congregation also prayed with that grandfather. And after praying, here the grandfather go uh, 250 miles just to find or just to go to the place where uh, the search is being made. And then finally, after a few hours, after a few hours, someone knocked on the door while ha they are having the convention, and they said, and when he entered, he came rushing and said, yes, the lost has been found. My daughter was found. What a joy. What a joy the whole congregation experienced at the same time. Because finally, the prayers their prayers have been heard and the lost, the granddaughter that was lost was, be was found. What is that compelling, compelling force that enabled this grandfather to go 250 miles and to stop joining the convention? just to go back and, and join the search. It's not other than love. It's not other than love. What could be your com compelling force to reach out these lost people? It must be none other than love. If there is a message I want to leave, I want to leave you this morning, two words, start loving. Two words, start loving. May God bless us all.